Hey there, I'm Joey from EDH Rec, and lately I've been upgrading my decks, which I'm excited to tell you about, but I also want to tell you about how I've been able to upgrade them. We've done videos before about some of our favorite resources to help you out with your deck building. Big shout out to the advanced filters on EDH Rec, by the way. And I hope you'll indulge me with just one more, because I can't lie, it's a lot of fun to talk about cool resources that help us out with our deck building. You know how Tomer literally just made this video after Rachel Weeks told him about a really cool feature? It's kind of like that. Let's celebrate some awesome resources. So if you'll let me, I'd like to walk you through the site Cardsphere and show you how it's been helping me turn this into this. If it's not clear, this is a box of stuff that I don't play that I've been looking to trade away. And these are cool cards, like including a couple of pricey cards that I've acquired just by using card sphere without even having to spend a dime. Was that clear from context? <laughs> Did that make sense? Am I YouTubing correctly? <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. Um, okay. But for real, what's a card sphere and why should you care about it? In short, it's a market for card trading. Asynchronous peer-to-peer -peer card trading, if I were to get fancy about it. It's kind of the reverse experience of a typical marketplace. Instead of you going out to sellers to find something to buy, you can set your offers and wait for them to come to you. Here I'm adding cards to my wants page, where you can see I not only choose a card that I want, but I'm also able to choose a specific set or printing, language, whether it's foil, how many copies I'm after, and the card condition that I'm willing to accept, such as near mint, slightly played, moderately played, etc., with their corresponding price changes, of course. And most importantly, I can set a percentage of the card's price that I would like to offer. So if you're trying to get a dang good deal on a card, you can set a lower percentage to offer, or if you want to get it for sure ASAP, you can set a slightly higher percentage than maybe other offers out there. Not only that, but I can also set a maximum price limit that I'm willing to go for at all for this card too. And Cardsphere will actually even show you on individual card pages the most recent trades for that card, so you can get a good sense of how often things move at those percentages. On the homepage, there's even actually a list of recent trades and their prices, which is neat as heck, and it really helped me get my bearings on how to make sure I'm getting a good deal. And speaking of good deals, on that wants page, when you're setting your offer, you're not naming a specific price point, you're naming a percentage point, and Cardsphere automatically calculates the price for you. For instance, here I'm not committing to a specific price point, I'm just setting my offer at 90%, and if that card's price changes later on, then my offer will still be 90% of whatever that price ends up being. Heck, you can even tag things so that you know for later why you were after this card, such as what deck you want to put it into, which is great. This right here, setting your offers, that's how you get your best deal. That's how you save money. And if it happens that I've had a card in my wants list here for a while and no one's bitten on it yet, then I can adjust my offer later on if I need to. And later, when things are in your wants page, you can remove them or just put individual ones on pause if you would like, in case you're prioritizing trying to get other cards in your wants page, for instance. And of course, you can set them back to active ones again at any time. That's the wants page, but then of course there's the haves page, where you can list things you want to trade away, which is of course how you get the funds for other things that you want. For instance, I've got a foil swan song burning a hole in my pocket right now, so I can put that in, mark its condition, note that it's foil, note its language, and you can tag these cards too, which I personally use to remember where that card is located in my collection, like which trade binder I have it in. And of course, I can click on any of these to change them in case I made a mistake on anything. This is the main way I'm excited to get funds for this stuff on my wants page. Though, of course, if you want to, you can add funds too via PayPal, as well as withdraw funds via PayPal. But again, I just want to express, I haven't paid anything to set any of this up. Even setting up my account was free. Before I forget though, here's another cool thing on the haves page. As it turns out, over on these filters and actions tabs, you can do a bunch of cool things, such as sorting through your list, adding tags en masse if you've got bunches of cards that you're trading off, and the actions tab actually lets you import a whole Whole collection, like a CSV file. I know some folks who are serious into trading use programs to do that, so the fact that it can import an entire inventory here is very cool. And also, if you're a premium member, you can send sealed product. I, for one, have been very keen to use this to turn a box that I'm never going to open into some older cards that I definitely know I want to play in my decks. Or perhaps vice versa. And once you have some stuff in your haves page, you can go over to the sending page to see other people's wants and see if there are any matches between what they want and what you've got. Cardsphere will match up your haves with other people's wants, and you can decide if and when you'd like to accept any of those offers and start that
that trade. And cards will only appear in these matches if the person who wants that card has the funds in their account for it. So you're never going to wind up in a position where you send cards to someone who doesn't have their half of the trade ready. You'll only find eligible trades in these matches. You can even filter to only show offers of a certain type or of a certain price that you are willing to accept too, to help you search faster. Or of course, to make sure that you're getting the value that you want out of that exchange too. And you don't have to like babysit your inventory or anything like that. You can just set it and leave it and trades will only happen when you choose to get them underway. So can I be super candid right now? One of the reasons that I wanted to do a video on this is because, well, if y'all are familiar with this channel, you may have seen those videos that I like to do where I take a small concept such as the difficulty of cutting cards or rule zero, and I use that small example as like a microcosm so that we can then zoom out. And that topic actually is a springboard for a discussion about some greater, bigger sociological aspect of magic culture. And then we can talk about what it says about us as players and how we relate to each other. And that's what I like about this site, because using Cardsphere, I straight up feel nostalgic. It brings back the feeling of trading at events. And I know I'm not alone in this. It's been a long, long time since I brought a trade binder to an event. And when I asked folks online how often they bring their trade binders around to places, I got a lot of responses that matched up with my same experience. Like, a lot lot of responses that matched up with that experience. I asked that same question in our Patreon Discord to get a discussion going there, and one of our supporters mentioned something that I felt lined right up with my experience as well. They mentioned that they don't trade in person very often anymore, but luckily, we've gotten to feel a little bit spoiled by how nice Cardsphere has made the act of exchanging cards without a lot of extra hassle. The landscape of magic has shifted a lot, which means the landscape of trading has changed a lot too. A lot of the responses that I got mentioned a lot of the same concerns that I've had. Bringing trade binders around to places feels bulky, it's a lot to carry, we're afraid of losing them at events. And even little things like how many variants of cards there are these days all affect the things that we want out of trades now. For some of us, that has made stuff like trading off cards a lot harder to do. Lots of folks still trade plenty often, of course, but some of us have felt a very big, big change from that habit being frequent to now being super rare. So for me, it just feels so cool to find a place to do it again, <laughs> to find a place to offload cards that I'm not using and turn them into a means of acquiring cards that I actually will use. And I know I'm getting a good deal on this. I know I'm getting the total full value that I want out of each of those exchanges. I just go into the site, I set up what I have, and what I want, and if I find something that I'm willing to trade away at an offer that I think is reasonable, I can do it. And that process is so simple and so fast, because any haggling or hemming and hawing is already done by the time we're at the point of being matched up and anyone's accepting any offers, because everyone's already announced the deal that they are willing to take. So I can just find the one that suits me. I'll confirm what I'll send, then I'll get myself a top loader, make sure that I'm packaging the card safely, responsibly, <laughs> like in a way that it won't bend in the mail, stuff like that. Make sure that you ship things responsibly, get myself an envelope and a stamp and then ship it. And it's simple. And when I have a list of cards that I want, I don't have to go out and find each individual one myself, like I would have to do when I'm regular shopping. I can just set the list and let them come to me. <laughs> and it's not even region locked either. Like you can trade with folks from just about any country. And like the fact that you can set specific prices that you will or will not trade for so that you never have to part with anything in a way that makes you feel like you're losing value. The fact that your quote store, if you want to call it that on the site is only active when you are active. So you don't have to commit to sending anything without your awareness. There are no surprise deadlines, surprise time crunches. You enact the trading process yourself. You choose when it begins. And again, the fact that I've never once had to pull out my debit card to do any of this and the amount of money that I have saved by setting my offers, I just, iconic. I just can't help but be heartened by this. Like when things change and when new needs emerge, it's really cool to see communities find new ways to achieve cool things, such as the trading part of a trading card game. When things shift, the magic community adapts so magically. <laughs>
And like, not to be a cheese ball, but this site did an anonymous survey that got over 140 responses per question, asking folks what they like about the site and whether they would recommend it to other people. And like, these anonymous responses are just, again, really dang heartening, really dang awesome to read. People saying it's cheaper than buying cards, but not as much of a time sink as usual trading and haggling and all that. People saying how there's no pressure to sell, sell, sell. You can just go at your pace whenever you have time. Folks noting how they can put competitive offers on urgent cards and bargain offers on cards that have a lower priority for them. One responder even said it feels much more like trading in person than anything else they've tried, which is like, yeah, I didn't write that, but I may as well have, because that's how I feel too. I'm delighted also at how many responses praise the site for having a, quote, robust and fair dispute system, and that the team that helps to resolve disputes is so fair and doesn't bias towards sellers or bias towards receivers or anything like that, and how much trust these users get from the trading community on the site. And there are so many people citing how easy the site is to use, too. I've also got to shout out some extra details about sending and receiving, like this section where a sender can input tracking numbers for everyone's convenience, or how there's a section for disputing in case anything happens to come up, like if something is the wrong edition or condition. Cardsphere has a very helpful and very active team of moderators to assist you. They also have a Discord too, which is bustling. Also, funds don't get sent until you, the receiver, confirm receipt of the card, which is just chef's kiss. Even little details, like if a card gets banned, it puts a pause on that card site-wide for 24 hours, so that you never get accidentally caught off guard or anything. This happens for big reprints too, since big reprints can radically affect the price of a card and impact whether you want to trade for it, Cardsphere pauses it, notifies you, and you have time to go update your wants page if you need to. That's so thoughtful. Those little details really add up. I want to cover one last thing too, and that's anchor sending. You don't have to send cards one at a time. If you're trading stuff off and you have a card that someone wants, you can see if you have other stuff that they want too. This is a great way to send off lots of things at once, including like a bunch of bulk if you've got a lot of cards that you are looking to eventually turn into a bomb rare later. And yeah, this is how I've been getting some of those pieces for my latest decks uh, and how I've been able to build my latest deck. I've been card sphering to get those things. Like I built that new Izoni Aristocrats deck and I didn't have a Vein Ripper, but I have one now. Um, I also needed some extra token makers for that deck and here, Endrixar, Lord Skitter, uh, a couple of lands that I needed more of too. I was really happy to get some of those. Um, I pre-ordered the Sheldon Secret Layer as well, which of course has a new edition of Teferi's Protection in it. And when I get that one, I'm, I'm like, all right, sweet, that's going to be really cool. And I'll trade out a Teferi's Protection that I already have in another deck because I won't, I, won't, I won't need that regular one anymore. So I can trade that off and turn that into something. I'm really excited about that. A lot of folks had also asked me why I don't already have the card Ink Moth Nexus in my Babala Saga deck because that deck loves a whole bunch of those types of lands. And the answer is because I didn't I didn't have one yet. Uh, it was I always felt a little awkward to go and buy. No one I knew had one to trade. But girl, I got one now. <laughs> like, I got it on Cardsphere. Like, I put it in my wants list, and a day later, somebody was sending it to me. It was awesome. And I even got some really obscure stuff that is like kind of cheap, but just like it was difficult for me to find as well. Um, like, I built that Time Counters deck, and so I needed stuff like a Chronozoa for that deck because I'm really committing to the theme. And boom, <laughs> that's, that's how I got some of those weird suspend and time counter cards. I just, yeah, just some of the spoils, I guess. Anyway, I've been using this site for several months now and the experience has just been really good. So I wanted to share, I wanted to give kind of a walkthrough because it feels really cool to highlight useful resources for deck building. I know, wild that EDA Trek loves talking about cool deck building resources, right? <laughs> just ways of turning cards I don't use into cards I will use. That's quintessential trading card game stuff right there. And, and the fact that it all happens in a way where each person can offer or set or find the value of cards that they want means that you're always able to make sure you get your best deal, that you save the most money and that you get the value you're after. If you're interested, it is 1 billion percent free to set up a Cardsphere account. They have some cool tutorial videos on their site as well, including tutorials for like some snazzy features I didn't even have time to get into here. There is a link to Cardsphere in the description of the video of course. So consider giving it a look if you, like me, have felt a shift in the way that trading as a habit, as a part of the hobby, has maybe changed over the years. And uh, while you're taking a look at that, consider also giving us a like and a subscribe to. Uh, I don't know, C could be fun. Uh, but really, I am actually very curious to hear from more people about their habits with trading. Are you like me? How often do you trade cards nowadays? Let me know in the comments. And as always, remember, EDH wreck your deck before you wreck your deck.